In the category of reference types, we have learned about objects and arrays. Now let's take a look at functions. Functions are one of the fundamental building blocks in JavaScript. A function is basically a set of statements that performs a task or calculates a value. Let me show you a couple of examples. So I'm going to declare a function using the function keyword. Now we need to give it a name. Let's call that greet. After that, we need to add parentheses. That's part of the syntax for declaring functions and then curly braces. Now what we have here inside the curly braces is what we refer to as the body of this function. And this is where we add all the statements to define some kind of logic in our application. For example, the logic for this function should be to display a message on the console. So here we can add console.log hello world. Now note that here we have a statement, so we terminate it with a semicolon. But when we are declaring a function, we don't need to add semicolon at the end because we are not declaring it like a variable like this. Okay? This is a function declaration, right? So now we have a function. We can call this function like this. So we add the name of the function and parentheses again, and then semicolon to indicate that this is a statement. Save the changes. Now we have hello world on the console. But that's pretty boring. Why would we do this? Let me show you how to make this more interesting. Our functions can have inputs, and these inputs can change how the function behaves. So let's say instead of displaying hello world, we want to display the name of the person here, like hello John. So we can add a variable here in between parentheses. We refer to this variable as a parameter. So this greet function has one parameter called name. And essentially name is like a variable that is only meaningful inside of this function. So inside of this function, we can work with this name variable, but it will not be accessible outside of this function. Now name is an input to this function. So instead of displaying hello world, we can display hello, then add a plus here to concatenate two strings. So we can add name after. Now, when calling the great function, we need to pass a value for the name variable or name parameter more accurately. So we can pass John here. Now we refer to this as an argument. So John is an argument to the great function and name is a parameter of the grid function. That's one of the things that a lot of programmers don't know. They don't know the difference between a parameter and an argument. So a parameter is what we have here at the time of declaration, but the argument is the actual value we supply for that parameter, okay? Now, let's save the changes. So we have hello John. Now, we can reuse this function, but with a different input. So we can copy this line here and change John to Mary. Save the changes. Now we have two different messages on the console. Now a function can have multiple parameters. So here we can separate parameters using a comma. So let's add another parameter like last name. Now we can change our console.log, add a space here, and then display the last name. Now when calling this great function, we should pass another argument for the last name, right? But let's see what happens if we don't do this. So I'm going to save the changes. See what we got? Hello, John, undefined. Because as I told you before, the default value of variables in JavaScript is undefined. So because we did not pass a value for the last name, by default, it's undefined. So I'm going to pass another argument here. We separate them using a comma. John Smith. And we don't need the second call to the greet function. Save the changes. Now we have hello John Smith. Hi guys, thank you for watching my JavaScript tutorial. This tutorial is part of my JavaScript course where you will learn all the essential JavaScript features that every web and mobile application developer must know. 
If you're an absolute beginner or have some experience in JavaScript and are looking for a fun and in-depth course that teaches you the fundamentals of JavaScript, this course is for you. This course is also packed with tons of exercises that help you master what you learned in the course. In fact, many of these exercises are questions that come up in technical programming interviews. So if you're pursuing a job as a front-end or a back-end developer, or if you simply want to have a more in-depth understanding of JavaScript, I highly encourage you to enroll in the course. For a limited time, you can get this course with a discount using the link in the video description. Click the link to find out more about the course and enroll.